the first thing we'll discuss is what is turbulence. Can I hear a little bit of uh, everybody's opinion or your thoughts on what is turbulence? Error one study, like vibrations and like some really known bass glossy layer for a profile. So like you said several things on steadiness? On steadiness, like say some bass steady state glossy profile. Okay, you have unsteadiness and there is some kind of a steady state behind it. Right. That's what you're saying. I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. How about you? Uh, pretty much the same, maybe uh, and random also. Also random, like the unsteadiness are random somehow. Okay, okay, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good word. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to add to that, I guess <clears throat> random unsteadiness with a wide range of length scales. With a wide range of length scales. That's that's good. Anything to add? Becomes more difficult as go towards <laughs> this side. Yes, um, it adds like some sort of oscillatory component to the flowing water. Oscillatory component? Yeah. Like Pre in pressure or velocity. But is that the same as unsteadiness? Uh, yes. Well, that well, if you, well, in that case, every bit is probably unsteadiness, right? Right, but like not. Is all unsteady flows turbulent? No, right. So there are there are fluctuating flows that you wouldn't call turbulent, like uh, acoustic waves, right? You wouldn't call that turbulent, but they are fluctuations so I think we we said uh, somebody else said something that the fluctuations are somehow looks random that's the uh, one thing that distinguishes acoustics from turbulence what else anything else you would add I think we just uh, said uh, let me just uh, put it on unsteady and uh, there is a uh, a steady, or oh, let me put steady mean flow, and uh, uh, I think In Young said uh, uh, looks random. Huh? David said. Oh, David said looks random. And uh, what did you say? A wide range of length. A wide range of length scales. Anything to add, Lee? Maybe. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, there are like like wide range of uh, different turbulence models. There are turbulence models. That's that's models, right? That's our our attempt of modeling the behavior of turbulence, right? So we'll talk about that later. I don't know what it says, but. Okay. Let me add a little bit more about. So so the random. Um, Turbulence does look random. A lot of people, though, think that when you look at turbulence, it's the solution of the Navier-Stokes equation, right? So, in principle, it's not really random, but the solution does appear random. So some people use the word irregular to describe it, and the and the apparently randomness comes from the chaotic nature of the dynamics. If you have a little bit uncertainty in the initial condition or in your boundary condition or some perturbations, then the solution after sufficiently long time is actually random. Right? So, so the randomness can be explained using the chaotic nature of the dynamics. And a wide range of length scales, that's also a very good comment. What do you think actually controls how wide the range of length scales is? Reynolds number, that's right. So that's a, a difference between low Reynolds number and high Reynolds number flow is that higher Reynolds number flows have a wider range of length scales. And turbulence, the, the, a lot of research of turbulence is done at the assumption of 
high Reynolds number. That means there are wide enough range of length scales that you can do some uh, scaling analysis to it. And what else? <laughs> and also, uh, unsteady, there is nothing to, uh, there is no objection about unsteadiness. And uh, also, turbulence is three dimensional, oh. right? There are, you can, you can have two dimensional flows that are, looks random and chaotic, has a steady mean flow and unsteady, and also potentially a r wide range of length scales, but like hardly any people would call that turbulent. All the physics are different. In 2D flows, for example, the energy transfers from smaller scales to larger scales, while in turbulence, because of the three-dimensional fluid dynamics, particularly stretching of vortices, that can only happen in 3D, that transfers energy most of the time from the larger scales to the smaller scales. And also, turbulence is a continuum physics. So when we talk about turbulence, at least in this class, we are talking about fluid dynamics at which even the smallest turbulent scale is orders of magnitude larger than the molecular scale, the mean free path of molecules. So everything or any turbulent dynamics or phenomenon can be in principle explained using partial differential equations. You don't have to go into molecular dynamics or anything discrete to explain turbulence. And lastly, turbulence is naturally diffusive and dissipative. Diffusive means it mixed things together. For example, whenever a boundary layer transitions from laminar to turbulent, the rate of heat transfer increases dramatically. The viscous stress increases dramatically. Right? That is all because Turbulence is diffusive. It mixes up, for example, heat. It mixes up, for example, momentum. So that is a, a characteristic of turbulence. It's also diffusive in the sense that if there is no energy input to turbulence, it dissipates very fast. Any turbulence is going to be gone if you don't have any energy to sustain it.